Hi, this is Jason from Horrific Nightmares. Welcome to my 31 Days of Horror in October. Day 1. Thank you guys so much for joining me. This is where I watch 31 horror movies in 31 days. All first time watches. And do a review. Now, this background should seem fairly familiar. It's what I've been using since the beginning. I have my Edgar Allan Poe's The Raven here. Just like I did last year. I'm a little... Trick or treater pumpkin. The skull spider. He might be new. And my skull. Yes. Speaking of skulls, I will be rating this year with bloody skulls. One for the least and ten for the best, of course. And today, in day one, we're going to be talking about a dark path. Now, I know this is familiar. Because I said I was going to do the ones that didn't make it in What's in the Bag, Jay. Because I know some people were curious about A Dark Path, so I wanted to talk about it. A Dark Path is a 2020 film, which runs approximately 75 minutes, and is written and directed by Nicholas Winter. This stars McKenna Geiler, Mary Beasley, and Tomasin Lockwood. Now, this is about two sisters. One of them's getting married. Abby's getting married, and they're having a, a bachelor party, which they all have to fly to. Not exactly sure where it was. They didn't really touch on that. The sister that's getting married is a bit of a free spirit. And the sister that is, I guess, the bridesmaid is very conservative and kind of like a stick in the mud. Now, after this bridal shower, or whatever you want to call it, they spend the night at a hotel, and they all have to catch flights in the morning. The rest of the girls go and catch their flights, and the two sisters are left in a rental car on the way to the airport. They happen to get lost down a country road, where there is a monster. And I'm kind of going to leave it there. Um, this is a slow burn. As a matter of fact, it's a 75-minute film, and nothing really happens until about an hour in. So that leaves you with, like, 15 minutes of monster. Now, I don't mind slow burns, but I know a lot of other people do. So let's just say this movie isn't going to be for everyone. Now, I love the design of the monster. The acting was... I actually thought the acting was good. This is a UK film, and I didn't think the acting was bad. This seems to get a lot of hate, this movie does. And I didn't really... I guess my expectations were low, so I actually didn't mind the film at all. Now, originally, <laughs> I gave this one a 7.5. And, and that would be 7.5 bloody skulls but some things happen towards the end of the film that I didn't particularly care for I can handle stupidity in small doses but they just kept doing stupid things at the end the survivors which they're trying to get away and one's waiting for the other one it's like I understand you're worried about your friend but if you don't move it, you're going to die. And then they get in the car and stop right in front of the monsters. I mean, it's... I don't know. I can only handle stupidity in small doses. So that seven and a half is now six and a half. And that is six and a half bloody skulls. I still think it's worth checking out. If you do like slow burns, this movie's definitely going to be for you. Um... I will probably revisit it because I thought the creature design was absolutely fantastic. That's my opinion. He kind of resembled the Tar Man a little bit from Return of the Living Dead and Return of the Living Dead Part 2. So, except for like a different design altogether, but he was just like uh, kind of slimy and um, black and kind of cruddy looking. So... 
that's kind of what he reminded me of. But I really, I really like the monster design. And like I said, I think it's worth a watch if you don't mind slow burns. So take that for what it's worth. And if you like what you see in here, hit that like button and subscribe. Don't forget day two. And until then, peace. Thank you.